Lagos. Up you Lagos. Greetings, wonderful up you community. Welcome to another edition of your favorite female centric program, Up You with Ezine. How you all doing? Me? I'm well, and I'm eager to get into our team for the month of June. Shoot up. Yep, yep, yep. It's our hour on radio, and I'm here to keep you company wherever you may be. So let's do this, my beautiful people. Finding self, finding purpose. My name is Ezine Kufrekanem, and I'm your host. <laughs> The topic today is woman shoot up. A lot of us must have at one point or the other witnessed how seeds planted in the soil break forth and shoot up above the ground. Depending on the seed, the time it spends in the soil differ from seed to seed. But when it's time to shoot up, it doesn't matter whether it's day, night, raining or sunny. The seedling simply shoots up. But it's not the same with us humans. Oftentimes, a lot of us are ready to shoot up, but we hesitate, citing excuses like circumstances are not favorable, country is not smiling, this and that. And more often than not, we lose the momentum and miss the opportunity to shoot up. Well, we're here all of this month to encourage you to not just shoot up, but to shoot for the boon. Even if you miss, you'll land among the stars. Woman, it's time to set your goals high enough to inspire you and low enough to encourage you. Stay with us. Welcome back. Today, as usual, we're streaming on Instagram at Opie with Ezine and also at RadioGarden.com. So keep it locked as we learn together. It's time to bring up our guest for the day. Our guest today on the show is Kate Nana Ibembo. Kate combines the sterling background of an air traffic controller, air safety inspector with the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority and CAA in Lagos. With writing, mentoring, and speaking, a John Maxwell team certified speaker, writer, mentor, and facilitator, Kate is passionate about personal growth, true self discovery, and acceptance translating to impactful living. She is a mentor with the Fellowship Network, TFN, an arm of the John Ashley Development JAD Foundation that guides, educates, and empowers young ladies for a purposeful living and also a member of the Zonta International Club of Lagos. One, where she brings girls to the beautiful knowledge of career path in aviation as the Amelia Earhart Day celebration under Zonta. Kate is a recipient of the Wise Woman Award for Excellence by the Wisdom of Women International and the Outstanding Female Air Traffic Controllers in Nigeria by the Women in Aviation International, Nigerian Chapter, amongst others. She lives in Lagos, Nigeria with her husband and three adorable sons. Kate loves to cook, read, write, travel and make friends. Dear listeners, who better to talk to us about shooting up than the one who ensures that aeroplanes actually fly up join us in welcoming a very special guest on the show today katie good morning lagos morning kate how are you i'm good thank you it's always a pleasure to see your beautiful face Mm -hmm. now you're making me blush thank you so much okay all right kate it's wonderful to have you on the show are you ready because yes, everyone is ready. Okay, okay. So, um, Kate, can you please tell us, you know, what's your, what's your perception and uh, your understanding of today's topic? Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, when I got the, the message and I saw the topic, shoot up, uh, my mind instantly went to the taking off of an aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but on the second thought, I went through uh, everything and like, oh, really? That is absolutely beautiful and such a topic in a time like ours. You know, we are in a time where everybody wants to be there. But how do you get there? So to me, uh, to shoot up uh, is actually like a, a, a movement or a quick movement, a rapid movement in a particular direction in life. Mm. So there must be something that propels you to move, and there must be a direction 
So you can't just move. So there must be a force that propels you to move and there must be a direction. So shoot up, to me, from my perspective, is a call to live. Not just live, to thrive. Wow. And be impactful. Wow. A lot has gone into that her perspective. Uh, but at first, my ear was just picking up the words that uh looking like aviation words propel i'm like okay now <laughs> here we go so before you shoot off out or shoot up you must be propelled by a force and it has to be in a certain direction because you don't just shoot up everywhere it must be in a certain direction thank you for that thank you for that that's, that's quite uh, a deep word I saw Toby shaking her head, so I think she agrees with you. <laughs> okay, so now that you have actually told us um, all of this, so let's place this conversation in perspective for everyone to understand where we're coming from before I open the phone lines. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about yourself and how today's topic applies to you. My name is Kate. Uh, she has, um, in a nutshell, talked about who I am. But I am an air traffic controller and an air safety inspector with the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. That is what I do as a profession. I'm a mom to three wonderful world leaders in training. So that means I'm on my feet to make sure I put out the best out there. Um, I'm also a very people-oriented person. So there must be a giving and a taking. So that is who I am in a nutshell. So I have many parts to a little me, but that is what every one of us is. So at every point in time in our lives, we are being called to shoot up, either shoot up ourselves or shoot up somebody else. So that is who I am in a nutshell. What do I do? I'm a career woman. I am a mom. I'm a friend. I'm a companion. I am uh, a body entrepreneur. So you can see uh, different f facets to me. Okay, Lagos, we have a multifaceted young lady sitting with us today in the studio. So she's trying to uh, encapsulate all that she is and all that she does into a tiny tiny statement for all of us to be able to appreciate what we're going to be talking about here. I like the fact that she says she's a companion because she actually tags herself your favorite life companion. That is how she tags herself every time she says something. And, and you know, I, that kind of drew me to her because I'm like, okay, I like to travel with this person who says she wants to also travel with us. Now, I'm going to open the phone lines and then so that we can have uh, a two-way conversation. So the number to call is 0913-6000-410. Toby, what's the number to text? The number to text is 091-36000-430. Fantastic. Uh, Kate, from your profile, one can see that you're big on growth, personal growth, you know. Mm -hmm. How did you arrive here? Or what events brought you to the realization that enabled you to become a growth coach? Everything in life boils down to events. Growing up, I, I really needed to see a side of me that I felt wasn't there. And I remember I got some part of me from my parents, definitely from birth. The other part of me was got from my um, environment and association. I also realized the importance of association on personal growth. And I found that at a certain point in time, you're trained by your parents. At another certain time of your life, you train yourself. And another certain time of your life, you are trained by events and association. So and I thought it wise. If I struggled with it, I wouldn't want the next person I come across to struggle with it. Mm. So it became a burning desire to equip myself so that I can equip somebody else. So it didn't it wasn't wasn't accidental, no. It could have been an innate calling, but I built on it because I knew a lot of people, including me, I'm still developing, I'm still growing. So if I come in contact with somebody, there's something I am taking from you even when I'm giving. 
So it became a desire for me to make sure everybody I come across gets to that point in their life where they feel, yes, I've got what it takes for me to not just live but thrive. So, and that's what prompted me to go into personal growth. I started growing myself, investing in myself. I had to keep getting equipped and equipped, reading, association, interaction, classes, name it. And uh, today, I'm okay to equip somebody while I'm still growing. So that is what life is all about. It's a continuous process. Interesting stuff. So it gets to a point that we no longer can make the excuse that our parents didn't grow up. Because we need to now take over the button and grow ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to another point where we also have to let the events and interactions in our lives help us grow, shoot up, and all of that. Really, really an eye-popping revelation there. So now that we have figured out all that, can you define for us what is growth? And what does it mean to have a growth mindset? When we hear growth, what comes to our mind as you know, you know human beings? Someone is growing. What comes to our mind is a physical increase in size. Either you're losing weight or you're growing fatter, you're growing taller, but you can't grow shorter. So when we hear about growth, that is what comes to mind. But growth in this aspect is beyond the physical growth. You could be growing physically, but internally you're incapacitated. So what happens is that you have a growth that doesn't transcend your physical person. So to me, growth uh, is, a, is a progressive increase in the size of anything and anyone in life. Your growth can be measured in different dimensions. It's not just maybe a child is in school, he or she is getting straight A's, and you feel the child is growing. What about the moral of the child? What about his social um, relationship with people? So that, to me, growth is, is an all-rounder. Thank you so much. I, I like how beautifully you crafted what you just said. And so for somebody listening, is it possible that you share some of the tips of cultivating a growth mindset? Growth mindset is something that is not cast in stone. As our environment gives us the platform, it's like a plain canvas, right? You go into a studio, you're given a plain canvas to paint. You're given the colors, right? You either choose to color in monochrome or you choose to color in the beautiful colors of the rainbows. At the end of the day, a picture is presented, and they appeal to different people with different, you know, visions on how they view things in life. So, but there are some specific tips you can apply or imbibe for a positive mindset. Number one is allow yourself to dream. Mm. If you don't dream it, you can't even think it. It all starts up there in the mind. If you dream about something, you dream about it, helps you begin to put um, words to thought at the appropriate time. So you must be able to dream. Without a dream, you cease to live. Dream is a fantasy world. It gives you the idea. It helps you become the Michelangelo of your life. So you either choose to color in monochrome or you choose to color in the um, rainbow colors. So that is what, number one, allow yourself to dream. Don't be scared of dreaming. Nobody is ever um, arrested for dreaming. True. So dreaming is number one. Number two is try out new things every day. You dream it, you do it. Don't just think it. Try to do it. You dream of, oh, tomorrow I want to try to cook jollof rice, our beautiful Nigerian dish. That we're always fighting with other countries Ghanians. about Ghanaians, <laughs> yes. You know, you want to cook jollof rice. You think it in your mind. You dream about it. You smell it in your mind. The next thing to do is to do what? You go look for how to cook jollof rice. You either Google it or you ask someone. So you've not only dreamt about it, you are now trying it out. You might try it the first time and fail. You try it again until it becomes part of you. So that's a growth mindset. That's one of the tips. So you, you are allowed to dream. It's not... It's not uh, they say the only fool's dream is a lie. True. You must be able to dream, first of all, 
before you begin to act out what you dreamt. So you dream about your ideas, your fantasies, what you want to do, who you want to be, how you want to be that person. Then you put pen to paper. And that is where you begin to try out new things. Number three, be your own cheerleader. Mm. Be your own cheerleader. Mm. You know the, uh, the proverb uh, red lizard, the agama lizard? He fell from the Iroko tree and <laughs> smacked down on his belly. He looked around and said, if nobody... If nobody is going to, um, if nobody is going to uh, applaud me, I'll applaud myself. And so he nodded, and that's why they say he nods every time. The very concept of up you. If nobody is upping you, you up, up yourself. yourself. <laughs> so you must be your own cheerleader. Fall, but don't be too hard on yourself. Remember, people perceive you the way you see yourself. So in growth mindset, you dream it, you act it, you show yourself up. So that's it. Number four. Cultivate a sense of purpose. What are you willing to do? What is the why behind what you're doing? That's your purpose. Why did you dream? Why did you try to act it out? Okay, I wanted to cook jollof rice. Why? Because I wanted to eat it. Why? Because I wanted to share with my friends. Your purpose is to make sure you tell yourself, I can do it. Or for them to see that you can do it and encourage someone. So there must be a purpose to your dream before you act it out. Number five, have faith in your own ability. Nobody is ever a weakling in this growth you know, process. I grow at my own rate. My sister is in it grows at her own rate. You grow at your own rate. There's no competition, mind you. We all grow as we are given the ability. So don't ever belittle your ability because you feel someone beside you is growing faster than you are. No. There's an adage in Igbo that says, True. Let me say that in English. Where the runner gets to is where the walking person, the trekker, will also get there. It's just a question of time. That is it. So don't feel because, oh, I'm not such a person. No. Always believe in your abilities and continue to improve on your abilities. That is what gives you that sprout. You know, growth is a, is a process. So you keep sprouting and sprouting and sprouting and tomorrow you're an Iroko tree. Another one that is emphasize growth, not speed. Don't be in a hurry to grow. Grow well, get your roots deep into the ground of time and human development. Don't think of how fast you're growing. How well am I growing? How well and how wide? Not how tall. If you grow tall without the branches, when the wind comes, you're going to topple. But if you grow high, wide, and deeply rooted, whatever life throws at you, you get a balance. So emphasize more on growth and not speed. Importantly, every day gives an opportunity to grow. So don't be too hard on yourself. If you don't grow well today, apply the money of life and tomorrow you grow more. Those are the few tips I'm going to share. They are bound. Like I said, our circumstances gives us the leeway. These few tips that you said just sounds like a summary of an entire book. <laughs> 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 to be honest. And I feel like there's some women that, you know, cage themselves or since society has labeled them mm -hmm. as a particular thing, mm -hmm. the tendency to dwell on that thing and not progress and not shoot up mm -hmm. is there. So um, if you speak to that, how can a woman listening today evolve from what society has labeled her as? You know, I said something while we were talking. I said, people view you the way you view yourself. You give the society power to name you. Remember? Yes, you did. I, I was talking to a group of people, so I told them, you answer to the name you give yourself. If I come here and call Ezine, my friend will turn, right? If you come and call Kate, I will turn because it is a name I've given and accepted myself to be called. If the society labels you something and you accept it, it hampers you. If the society labels you something and you do not accept it, even if they're shouting that, you refuse to do what? You know, we're talking about growth, right? When you put a, a, a plant in a pot or in a box and place it under the, under the atmosphere, any hole in that box is where the, the, so the, the plant will tilt towards to looking for sunlight to feed it. Chlorophyll, photosynthesis, you know, little biology. You understand? So that's exactly how we are in the society. Mm. We are in a box. 
So that one that gives you, that particular element that gives you growth is what you tilt towards. So if the society has labeled you as something, it is within your ability. Remember I said, your ability. We said it. Have faith in your own ability. Spoken like a true um, gardener. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, you, when you were talking, you talked about growing deep and growing wide and not being in a hurry to shoot up. And as you were talking, I just kept seeing the Ashoka tree. Mm-hmm. You know, that tree stays under, that seed stays under the ground for a long time. And then where you just be wondering, will he ever grow? Is he even growing? And then suddenly one day he just wakes up and he grows all the way to six feet. You know, and because of its own particular characteristics, it grows that tall. Even when the wind comes, mm-hmm. it bends. But once the wind goes, it just goes right back up. Now, there might be a shrub next to it saying, can you imagine? It's grown so tall. Eh? And I'm still short. Maybe a hibiscus fry. Mm-hmm. I'm still short. Why am I short? And then you now say, okay, I want to be tall. No, that's not it, right? Mm-hmm. So you remain short in your beauty and bring out your roses. Exactly. And bring out your perfume. Exactly. So what the Ashoka is doing in their height, you are doing in your shortness. Mm-hmm. But you have the beauty Oh my goodness, thank you. I just kept seeing that and I'm like, oh, she's just she's just painting this picture. <laughs> okay, yeah. now let me um, take over from... Thank you, Toby, that was quite nice. Let me continue from where you stopped. Thank you, love. Okay, so Toby... Um, no, not Toby now. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, tell yes. me. You know, you, you, you've just gone on, on and on about, you know, growing and everything. We get it, we see, we hear. But a lot of times, let's not bring it down to human beings, to women like you and I, you know. How important is it for a woman to have a platform to shoot up? So many women, when you talk to them, they have ideas, they're dreaming. They have ideas, they know what they want to do. But the next thing you hear is, I don't have money. And right after I don't have money, they say, I don't have platform like you now. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. So... How important is it for a woman to have a platform to enable her to shoot up? Lagos, before she gets onto that, remember the number to call is 0913-60410. The number to text is 0913-60430. Please call us. Please text us so that we can continue enjoying this conversation. Yes, Kate, to you. Importance of a platform. I would uh, beg to uh, change that name and call it Importance of a Tribe. Okay, tell us about it. You know, uh, talking about growth, nobody grows in isolation. That is why uh, we are human beings. That's why we are born into families. That's why we find ourselves in a clique of uh, friends or people with the same idea or ideology. The importance of having um, a platform, in quote, a tribe to grow and thrive is not something that is that we need a magician to tell us that it is quite necessary. Because if it wasn't necessary, we wouldn't have been born into families. Maybe we would have just dropped from the sky, right? Mm-hmm. But that is why we have friends. That's why the human nature uh, um, hungers for a good relationship because it brings out the other side of you that you don't know that is there. When you're in a group of people that have the same ideas or similar ideas, I call it the same vibe. You must vibe to be to be a tribe. Mm-hmm. You must vibe to be a tribe. If you're in the midst of people that have the same ideas or same push in life, the first thing it does is that it gives you an empowerment. It empowers you to believe that you can develop beyond who you are. Mm-hmm. So because I am friends with Ezine, and I see Ezine doing so beautifully well. Whatever it is I need to do, she's always telling me, you can do it. If I can, you can. Have you seen it? It has become um, a power of growth via induction. Because I'm staying close to her. The, 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 the growth uh, perfumes coming out from her is getting to me, you know, like a cross-pollination. So it empowers you when you're in a, in a platform that supports what you're doing and telling you that no matter what happens, you can get there. So it empowers you. It can help you get to, <coughs> excuse uh, me, where you need to do 
or who you need to be and the power of accountability cannot be you know talked down because i'm accountable to her as a friend to you as a friend knowing that this is what we agreed to do you, you my 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 purpose first of all is not to fail myself but also not to fail those who have so much trust in me so accountability within that platform is what makes people not fail so what we need is to build a tribe exactly a tribe that believes in us mm -hmm. in what we're trying to do that will help us hype what we are doing exactly you know okay that's interesting because i was going to say um so 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 do, that means that as we're waiting for the platform mm -hmm. we should invest in cultivating a tribe exactly finding women of similar stuff you mm -hmm. know people you want or even men even men yes yeah you know, people you like you yes. admire people yes. you want to be like exactly people that you know encourage you to become better than you uh, are yes and try to build some kind of relationship, relationship with, with them, them yes and share your vision with them absolutely and then watch a platform appear exactly Just that is how it that's how it forms interesting stuff very interesting i like the fact you said about uh that's why we came in families in the first place yes so at the end of the day our ability to shoot up also is kind of dependent or codependent as well, as the case may be on our relationships with people absolutely you can't take it away from that absolutely mm. the people around us are it's actually the manure so to speak that you know speeds up our growth process mm. if so you don't nice. have the right people around you they stunt your growth mm. if you don't have the right people around you they stunt your growth you can't shoot up that's true wow okay let's now move to another aspect of you mm -hmm. the writer the author <laughs> you wrote a book when the windmill no longer spins okay i look at the title of that book uh when the windmill no longer spins and i'm like okay from the title what do i see the windmill is uh an object or something that traps power mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. if i remember so i i now read it to be when the thing that traps power that traps energy no longer traps energy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> am i right what's the book all about let me not let me just stop playing <laughs> <laughs> it's good it's part of growth okay my book when the windmill my no book longer. when the uh, when the windmill no longer um spins mm -hmm. is a book i wrote because I needed people to see that in every aspect of life, there's a growth process. Mm. There's a growth process. My book is uh, a book I wrote in tears and in pain. But I knew that in my own tears and in pain, lies somebody's growth. Elixir. So, when that which gives me lifts stops working it is absolutely necessary for someone else to lift or to move or to grow that book uh, um, talks about my life as a mom to a son with special needs you know this is a situation where somebody would have stopped growing entirely and said you know what I'm done. I'm going to just call into myself and just live life the way life is treating me. But I decided not to live life the way life has thought it is treating me, but to live life the way I am calling the shots in living my life. And that right there is Groot. Yeah. That's right there is shooting up despite your circumstances. Yes. How is your son doing now, by the way? Fantastic young boy. Great. I can imagine. Thank you for writing the book. I am going to ask for a copy so that I can read it and um, understand your perspective. I think, oh, she has one here. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting stuff. Amazing. This is our season of... Um, and she's 
got positive affirmations yes the book. oh my yes. goodness this is awesome okay so we're going to share this when the time <laughs> comes um let's just continue the show because time is running but interesting stuff very quickly yeah you also recently delved into manufacturing mm. yes i did mm-hmm. tell us how this new shoot up is going you know, um, like I said earlier on, growth is something that is not one time. It's all encompassing. So, and uh, at every point in time in a human being's life, there's always that ish to branch out. Mm-hmm. You know, when if uh, a, a seed is planted, it keeps growing. The first you see just the, the stem and the leaves, then you, the, the branches start sprouting, sprouting, sprouting. Mm-hmm. So... By 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 nature, as God has made it, we are not supposed to just grow up. We're supposed so, to branch So out. basically, now you're saying, so there was Kate, or there is Kate. Yes. And Kate is the human. Yes. Being mm-hmm. Kate, the wife. Uh-huh. Then she begins to branch out. Kate of that course. has children. Yes. Kate that has a day job. Yes. Kate that wrote a book. Yes. Kate that speaks to people. Mm-hmm. And these are your branches. Yes. And so now you just also shut up another branch. Yes. Kate that manufactures. Very nice. Yeah. I love. She's just using the the the, the plants very well. So give us. Uh, so tell us quickly. So um, two years ago, I lost my dad, and it was a very dark period for me. I remember that particular night, I couldn't sleep, and I was like, "What do I just do? Okay, let me go can my tomatoes. I've been in in into canning of uh, tomato sauce for my house use." which I do home can, no additives, no preservatives, and I eat very healthy. And something just told me, turn your grief into gain. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't quite get it. I'm like, God, what turn are you telling you? Turn your grief into gain. Yeah. I'm like, and get busy. I'm like, how do I get busy? I can hardly function. You know, all I did was wake up, get the kids ready for school, go back to bed, cry and all that. But then I had this insane urge to just share what I've been doing within my home with people. And so I went looking for how to uh, get mason jars and begin to do, can my tomato sauce. Mm. And I started and I sampled it among some people like, oh, it's so good. Because one thing about the sauce is that it, it's you don't need to store it in a refrigerator or anywhere. It sits it sits pretty on your on your uh, counter in the kitchen or in your pantry for a year. You don't need to bother about light or anything. Are you joking? Yes, I I took my time to you know experiment over and over again. You know the growth process. I failed. I continued like that for like two or three years before I got it right. Oh wow. <laughs> yes, it's oh, that, that's wow. yes, that so is it. You actually saying that you are manufacturing something that will make my life pretty easy. I simply take it, pour it in. Oh, she has another one here. <laughs> <laughs> Kate can prepare it. Okay, so oh yes. wow, I see you actually preserve with oil on top of it. We yes. have a call. Good morning, up you with Ezine. Who is calling and where are you calling from? Hello, good morning. I'm James, calling from Lekki. Good morning, James. How do you do? Um, before, I'm James. Great. And I, I really want to say it's been a pleasure listening this morning. Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. And I actually was hoping that the guest could share more about her career. I mean, as a traffic controller. So oh, okay. He has not said Okay, we're going we're gonna to close that with that. We are leaving the best for the last. <laughs> oh, all right. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, so you are. thank you. This is really nice. It has uh, chili, onion, garlic, and ginger. Okay, uh, we will talk about this again off air. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And then, um, so that's a new shoot now, the new branch. Okay, so as you can see, someone listening wants to take us back to the original, the stem. Yes. Yeah? Okay, so let's go back to what it is that you do that makes sure that wins you award and ensures that each time we get into the aircraft we're sitting pretty we have two minutes okay um the last caller i, I didn't get his name his name is james okay uh, james thank you for calling in yes i am an air traffic controller by profession and i work with a team of fantastic people yes my team my team is the best 
you know, so air traffic control basically is the process of making sure every passenger that boards an aircraft from takeoff to landing is in safe place. So our duty is to transport passengers and cargo from point A to point B in the air in a safe and efficient manner to make sure you get your destination safely. That is it in a nutshell. So I work with a, with a, a group of people who work in what is called shifts. We work in, in shifts 24 hours a day. So that is any time you hear an aircraft flying overhead your house or you see one across the, 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 uh, the sky, just know somebody somewhere is seated pretty and thinking fast and safe to make sure you see your loved ones and you get your business done on time. Thank you. So all of us owe you something for our individual growth as well. Because the fact that you can get me from here to Abuja for me to go do that business that will look you know, translate to growth in my life and all of that in my finances and in my well-being is because there's someone, you or you, someone in your team. Yes. All over the country. All over the, the world, world. All over the world. Doing yes. awesome. Yes. Uh, frankly, Kate, time is not on our side, but yeah. we have actually been well educated today by you. I must say thank you for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. And I must commend you for all the things you drop out every day on Facebook to ensure that we are all green. I personally read you every wow. day. Thank you. No matter what happens, I find your page. I read it because there is something to always learn. Thank, thank you. Thank you for volunteering to be uh, our what? Our favorite life companion. Thank you very much. You want to say thank you to her very quickly? Thank you so much for sharing a bit about yourself. I know that there's much more, right, from where that came from, but I'm also very inspired by your entrepreneurship journey and how it is that you're able to turn your grief to gain. Yeah, that's Thank the word. That's Thank the word you. she's leaving us with. Turn your grief to gain. Mm. And no matter your circumstances, keep shooting up. It is not just one shot. You shoot up very many branches. That is my take for today. Woman, don't just shoot up once. Keep shooting up branches. It's been quite an interesting discussion and this is all we can take in for today. I am sure that someone somewhere has learned something today. So thank you for everything again, Kate. This is where we wrap up today's edition of Up You With Azine. It's been another amazing one. Please follow up on Instagram and Facebook at Up You With Azine. Get copies of our books, When As Vasty Strikes Fight and Up You. And may I also advise that you get copies of Kate's book, When The Windmill No Longer Spins. It's quite an intriguing story. Big up to everyone that is involved in creating this magic every week. Starting with you, our dear listeners, our guests, our advertisers, callers, the engineers on duty, the amazing up you team, 98.3 Mainland FM, the sound of Lagos. You all stay strong. You all stay blessed. You all stay lifted. My name is Ezine Kufrekanem. Until I come your way next time, it's up you. Mm-hmm.